Hey, I think we're close. I think we're close. Do you think we could get it? Do you think we could get it a little lower? Welcome to another episode of the Watch Me Wholesale Show. Here's how this is going to work. I'm going to randomly pick a market. I've got a picker wheel here. We're going to spin the wheel. We've got 10 markets selected. Whatever market it lands on, I'm going to show you how I'm going to go into PropWire. If you don't know what PropWire is, it's the largest database of seller leads in the country, over 157 million records, and it's absolutely free to search and download as many records as you want. So going into PropWire, I'm going to go into that specific market that we that we select, and then I'm going to find a property. Uh, hopefully, I can run the numbers on it, call, make an offer. That's the goal here is to get all the way from random market to lead to running the numbers to making the offer. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Jerry Norton. I make millions of dollars a year wholesaling and flipping houses. Here on my YouTube channel, I show you how to do the same. If you want to be a flipping genius like me and live your dream life, subscribe to my channel and watch my videos. Okay, so let's get going here. Let's spin the wheel and pick a market. Okay, so let's spin the wheel and see what market we get. Charlotte. Okay, Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's go find a deal. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into PropWire and I'm going to put in Charlotte, North Carolina. And there it is. So it's going to choose that major metro market. Then next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to pick MLS Active. So for this particular episode, I'm going to look for on-market properties. Then I'm going to choose single family. And for now, I'm not going to choose any other filters. I could choose some of these other filters. And what you'll see here is on the left, it'll show you a map of all the available properties. It has 794 that, that match our results. And then if I put my mouse over the actual record here on the right, it gives me a little map and it kind of shows me where I'm at and which property I'm looking at here. And one thing I like to do here is I like to sort it by list price. And then I'll go from the lowest price up to the highest. And you can see here, like it's found a couple of properties here. And for example, this one here on 342 Kirby, I put my mouse over it, it shows me a picture. It looks like it's a little distressed. Looks like it needs a roof maybe. Now, a couple things on the record here is this says that it's a single family, individual owned. It's for sale. It's an empty nester category, which means they've lived in the property or they've owned the property for a while. Uh, it's high equity and it's an intra-family transfer. So this might be an inherited home. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this record. Now it pulls it up here and you can see I've got pictures and so on. And I can go here to the owner and it's gonna tell me information about the owner. I can go to comps here, which I'll come back to in a second. I can go to history. It could tell me some history about what, what happened here. It looks like a couple years ago, this was transferred to a Jesse James Miller and then actively listed for 175, six days on the market. So this thing just came out a few days ago. The agent is Erica Strong. Now, typically what I'll do here is the next step is I need to call this agent, right, to make an offer. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do some quick comps. So if I click the comps category here, um, our property, it tells us is a two bedroom, one bath, 950 square feet. So I kind of want to stick to that. Maybe I do same number of bedrooms that brought it down to just a couple here. And look at this, this, this one got 235 on Leland real close to us. So that's probably a rehab, it got 257 bucks a foot. So real quickly in a couple seconds, I just kind of get my bearings around you know, the market. Uh, I'm guessing I could go research this and see, but I'm guessing that this is probably a rehab since it did so well. And this one got uh, 145. 145,000, but only 147 a foot. So typically when I see that, it'll tell me, okay, well, that's probably a distressed house and this one's probably a rehabbed house. So that gives me a little bit of information. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna go over back over here to property and I'm gonna go down and click show more. And then if I scroll down, it's gonna show me who this agent is. So I go down here and and this agent is Erica Strong, and there's an email, and it looks like an office number, a phone number, those are probably the same numbers. So typically what I'll try to do now is I'll try to text that number and see if, uh, if it goes through, and if I can say to, the, say to this agent, hey, I'm an investor, I'm all cash, wanna make an offer on your property on Kirby, call me. 
And it's just a great way to kind of like grab their attention. A lot of times if I just call, they won't answer because they don't recognize the number. Sometimes they will, but it's just faster if I send them a text, say, hey, can I call you? When they see uh, I'm interested in making an offer and I'm cash, typically it gets their attention, right? So that's what I, that's, so we'll try that right now and see if I can get a hold of her. Okay, if I can't, then what I'll often do is I'll, I'll Google uh, their name and number and see if I can find them like a cell phone is what I'm really looking for. So Erica Strong, Charlotte, North Carolina, and usually realtor.com tends to list their cell phone. Okay, so here's a different number here. So let me go ahead and text this number and see if it goes through. Okay, now that went through. Uh, and again, I said, here's what I said. Hi, Eric, I'm an investor interested in making an all-cash offer on your listing on Kirby Drive. Can I call you? And uh, now I'm going to try to actually just call the number and see if she answers. Yes. Hi. Is this Erica? Uh-huh. Hi, Erica. My name is Jerry Norton. I'm calling you about a listing you've got over here on Kirby. Uh-huh. Okay. What well, can you tell me about this? Um, actually, it's under contract. Oh, it's under contract. It's under contract today. Mm -hmm. that, that, went by, that went quick, huh? Yeah. Are you an investor? Yeah, investor? I'm an investor. Yep. Pay, oh, okay. pay cash. I was Are looking you? at fixing it up. Do you do anything in South Carolina? Yeah. You got something? Mm-hmm. Tell, yeah, what's your, um, tell me I about it. I need some information on it. Um, it's a three-bedroom. It's a condo. It needs some upgrading. Everything is good on it. It's just, they're just ready to sell it. So I'm doing it off-market. That's why I was asking. Tell me the address. Um, one, two, three, David Street. David? Uh -huh. What city is that? Fort Mill. Say that, Fort? Fort Mill. Mail? Uh, Fort Mill, South Carolina. Hold on a second. One, two, three, David Court. David Court. Fort Mill. Okay, let me see if I can look this up real quick. Uh, Fort Mill 29715, looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's the story on this one? Looks looks like maybe they're an investor. No, it's in oh, a state. Okay. They're ready to sell it. In a state, has it gone through probate then? Yeah, everything's done. Okay, what do they want for it? Uh, two sixty. Two sixty. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it is a three bedroom. Yeah, it's a three bedroom. Okay. A lot of two bedrooms in this area. Let me see if I can. Okay, so it's right here in Fort Mill. And this is, where is this? Let me kind of get my bearings here. Oh, so it's just south of Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is that, about an hour? An hour from where? Charlotte. Um, yeah, 40 minutes. And what's the square footage on this? Doesn't say. I'm just trying to look it up. What are you showing as your square footage? <clears throat> Hold on a second. If you send me your email, I can send you a video of it. It's uh, 1412 square feet, 1986 year built, three bedroom, two baths. Yeah, send, send that to me. I'll text it to you right now because I just uh, sent you a text. Okay. Um, and then I'll take a look at that. And what are they looking to do to get a cash offer? Mm -hmm. What do you think it's worth fixed up? Any idea? 275. 275. You think it's fixed? Huh? Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Yeah, maybe 280, somewhere around there. It does need a little upgrade, so just depends. How much do you think it needs in work? Um, nothing's wrong with it. It's just need 
you know, cosmetic upgrading. So someone can live in it, so it's not like a big flaw. Mm-hmm. But to, like, flip it. Sure yeah. <laughs> 1,400 square feet. Okay. Yeah. Probably 40, 50 if you're just doing, you know, counters. I, and... that much. I mean, would you do new cabinets? Mm, yeah, you probably could. Yeah. And then tell me again the asking price. 260. They, will, they have room to negotiate, but that's where they're at. Yeah, so if they're asking 260, but and then I got to spend money and it's worth 280, that'd be way too high, right? Yeah, but what I say is just make an offer based on what you. Okay. Do, yeah. Like everyone else. Yeah, so what I would do is I would, you know, if I run my numbers, if I if I'm gonna get 280, and again I I can verify all this, but if I get 280, by the time I factor in closing fees, commissions to resell it, because I'm a flipper, commissions to resell it, rehab. You know, try to make a little bit. I'd have to be down there quite a bit. You know, probably like, probably more like 150 to have enough to have enough room in there to go in there and spend spend money, do do the whole rehab, resell it, make some money. I mean, how how desperate do you think they are yeah. to sell? They're not that desperate. They have an offer that's more than that, so they're not that desperate. Okay. Where would I need yeah. to be then to, to get it, just so I have my bearings? Closer to what I was t- telling you. Closer to 260? 260. 260. Mm-hmm. So, so that makes sense for you. Yeah, unless someone's just going to throw a renter in there, you think that's what they're... What's what's the other guy willing to pay that much willing to do? Just rent it? They'll, they're going to sell it too, but I, they're probably not going to do much upgrade. But, um, um, I, yeah, you can rent it out though. Is that what they were going to do? Well, what are they going to do? I'm just trying to figure out what someone else, why someone else would pay that much for it. Unless they're going to... They'll just probably resell it. I don't know if they're going to put a whole bunch of work in it, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Maybe just clean it up and I mean, resell it. I could sell for 300 to be honest with you. It's not a bad place. It's, the area is very... You know, people want to live in this area, so it has a lot of perks going for them. So mm-hmm. you could just look at it. That other offers cash, though? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what do you think about two forty then? Are you charging fees? I mean, that's still a little low, but are you charging uh, commission fees? No, I'm unrepresented, so you could take the buyer side. Okay. No, I can't. But I'm just saying I can work it where. Okay, if you can't. Makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> so if someone you someone in my office can do it for me, but. Yeah. But you can't. Mm-mm. Okay. So uh, you're you're saying you're saying two forty cash. Okay. Do you want to see the video first before you make an offer? Yeah. Today? Yeah. I'm just they trying want to, make to a decision today. Today. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, what'd be great is you say, Jerry, if you were at this number, you got a really good shot at getting it, and then what I'll do is I'll look at different different exit strategies maybe we keep it maybe we rent it maybe we maybe we just clean it out like you said and just relit relist um which maybe i could get your help on but like i'll just kind of look at some different scenarios but what i don't want to do is waste a bunch of time since you're kind of under the gun especially and then because i can do all kinds of different things with the property you know i'm kind of super flexible i just look at what's the best Hold on one second for me. Let me see what I can do. Hold on one second. Okay. Is it brick? Mm-hmm. Yeah, here's a here's eleven hundred square feet sold for two ninety two. They would like to walk away with at least um, two forty minus fees. 240 minus fees is what they want to walk from. Mm-hmm. 245 ish. Yeah, minus all fees. So that's like minus my fees, you know, all that. Can you, um, okay, well, like I don't really need buyer representation. So if you just, we could just eliminate the buyer side, or if you want someone in your office to take it, that's fine too. However, However you want to do it. 
Mm-hmm. But where would that put it then? So you're saying you're saying he wants to be at two forty ish um, before your fees or after your fees? After. After. So we got to factor in some more like two fifty or something like that because you're gonna probably have no more than that. Yeah, like two sixty because you're gonna have twenty thousand in fees. No, 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 not that many. You're looking to get three, right? So maybe 15 if you do a little bit to it, like you do a reduced amount to a buyer's agent. Then closing fees, you're going to have probably about 15 in cost to close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a 255. Like What's that? Probably 8,500 other fees without any buyer involved. Without a buyer's agent? Mm -hmm. With closing too? Okay, so yeah, so you're looking at more like a 250 offer probably would they would take. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is if I pay 250, what? How much room do I have, and what can I do with this property? That's the question. Yeah, that's your question. So if you're saying you got to put 50,000 in it, are you going to rent it out? I guess that's if you yeah. Can so sense. okay, I mean, I'm looking at this. There's some nice homes in this area. Well, why don't you send me that video so I can get my head around what kind of condition it's in? But like I'm looking at one here on on Phil Court, which is right there in that neighborhood. And this is 1300 square feet. Let me see what kind of condition this is in. Phil Court. It's another bricker and this is not this is not renovated at all. And it closed about six months ago for three fifteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two two fifty could be a deal. Let me see what else I can see over here. Here's a three ninety five. Where's this one at? Yeah, I just don't know if it, how much it changes when I cross uh, that that Tom Hall Road. I would stay in the same area yeah i'm just looking at half a mile but let me go ahead and i don't know if i want to i don't know if i want to get out of that area very much um yeah i mean those are all right there like that one's 1700 that one's 1700 but i got 220 a foot 240 a foot 260 a foot 245 um, that one got 238. So I think about 240 of 235 to 240 a foot feels about right. And how, and how many square feet did you say this was 14? What? 12, 14, 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's like 338. Well, I sent you the video. Um, if you can let me know before five, that would be great. Yeah, let me take a look right now and then um, watch for our number. I'll give you a call back here in a few minutes. Okay, thanks. Okay, sounds good. All right, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, so, I mean, we called on one and we got uh, a lead on another, which is very common. I have that happen all the time. I have that happen all the time with agents. So now let's get our head around this property. Okay, so let me see if I can pull up these pictures she said she emailed these to me and let's go in here and see if we can find this okay so i'm going to go ahead and open this google drive that she sent and you can see here there's a whole bunch of pictures oh wow okay i like this this brick looks like it's got a new roof okay look how sharp this house is so i mean i don't need to know much about this market but i know an all brick home like this nice curb appeal there's the garage so it's got an attached garage this is a great looking house. Let's go inside and see what we can get. So I'm just gonna go through kind of fast. I don't need to see a lot. I just wanna get a general idea. Okay, so older, kind of original cabinets, white appliances. Looks like some Pergo type of flooring. 
these are really bad pictures, but there's all their stuff is in here. And that's a that's a vinyl floor. That's a Formica type countertop. Um, but looks like it's well cared for, lived in, but like those cabinets don't look like they're falling apart or anything. Okay, so I got a pretty good idea. It's, I'm, you know, I'm, I call this grandma's house, right? So it's sort of original and, but taken care of and in fairly good shape. So houses like this can resell pretty quickly just as is. Um, now, remember, she said this was off market, so no one knows about this property. It's a lead from her. We would work through her to make an offer. And so my real question right now is one of the strategies I like to do is just take it down um, and just resell it. So one idea might be we'll just trash it out, clean it, take new pictures, relist it, especially with that beautiful curb appeal being brick like that. And Or I could uh, wholesale it to a flipper or even take it down and do the rehab myself and flip it. Like I've got options. Depending on what you're doing, if you're just looking at wholesaling, then you could either uh, just do a straight assignment, do a double close. If you got capital, you can take it down like I said, just do new pictures and relist it. I'll do that sometimes. That does require capital because now you're buying it and then reselling it. And I just kind of want to look at all the different options and then choose whichever one gives me the greatest return. If you're limited in your capacity and what you can do, then maybe just a straight assignment is a great strategy and that might not be bad either. So remember, we're at 250 and I need to see, okay, well, what will that nice brick home in a fairly clean condition, what's the value of that property? So what I want to do now is I want to go back and take a look and comp this. Okay, so let's do a couple things here. I'm going to go to my comps category on this. And this is like a small town kind of south of Charlotte. So I'm probably going to go out a mile. Normally I like to stay half a mile, but when I'm in a smaller town, maybe I'll look at kind of a bigger area. I'll put sold in the last year. I'm just trying to get a good idea of what's going on here. Single family, you know, we're only 1,400 square feet, so maybe I'll go like 30% is one of my options. Range, I'm not looking at stuff too small, too big. And then one idea here is I just wanna go through and I kinda of wanna get an idea, okay, well, what's the top of the market? And I like to look at price per square foot, not price, because price is gonna be, you know, it's, it's not apples to apples, whereas price per square foot is. So you can see here I got a 266, that's a pretty high number, 261. And then I got low stuff like 138. So that obviously wouldn't be an ARV comp. It'd be more of an as is or a distress comp. So what I want to do here is I'm just going to kind of go through and just hand pick my highest comp. So you can see here I've, I've found a couple already in the 260s. Here's a 259. It's feeling to me like rehabs over here, top of the market. There's a 270. Okay, so 220. There's another 265. There's another 263. 258 so lots of comps around that 260 to 270 a foot Let's see if there's any i missed 259 260 there's a 262 you know 245 there's a 286 i'm gonna grab that one and any more yeah here's a, i got those already okay so that's putting me at a 372 as my value. Now I picked comps that were the highest comps in this mile radius, and that's giving me 372. So what it's doing is it's taking the average of the price per square foot, and then it's multiplying it by my square footage of the subject property, and that's how it's getting this 372. So in a super fast glance right here on, on uh, just on PropWire doing the comp feature without actually looking at comps, Remember, I, I'm always about, it's always about speed. How fast can I get through this? I want to get to some high level numbers. And then if I want to drill down, I can get to some, some more accurate numbers. But in this case, we already know our number. She said 250 is what's going to get this deal done. So if I take a 370, I'm just going to round up to 375. And I go 75% of that, which is what typical flippers in a market like to make. That puts me down to 281. And if I back out on that thing, you know, like if a, if a flipper wants to do like a carpet paint, you know, maybe they're going to spend 20, 25. So if I back out, let's just say 25, puts me at about 256. Okay, so we're at 250. So now that feels good, right? I mean, that's not quite where I want to be. I'd like to make more than a $5,000 wholesale. But if I run the formula of ARV 375 times 
75% minus 25 in rehab means an investor, a flipper, would like to be into this for 256, roughly, right? And I can get it for 250. Okay, so, but could I get more than 375 on my, on my value? Maybe. So let's do this just for fun is I'm gonna run over to, um, I'm gonna jump over to Redfin where I can actually look at pictures and pull up the comps. So I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna Google this and go to Redfin. And then I'm gonna map this real quick. I'm gonna search nearby homes for sale. And there's where we are. So we're right, we're right in the middle here. We're on this David Court. So we're right here. I'm gonna kind of, uh, I'm gonna zoom out a bit. Yeah, so I'm gonna kind of look at this whole area here. And right away I see that there's rehabbing going on. Like this is a rehab for sale. I'm on actives right now. So this looks like a very active market. I'm just gonna see what's for sale that's high price. Look at this, two beds, two bath for 385. Now that's not a brick like ours. Look at that, it's just a, a little box ranch with vinyl. So I wonder what the bricks are going for. They're, that looks sort of like new construction. What's this over here? Look at this one for 429. So let's go ahead and look at some solds. And I'm gonna go back three months. Maybe I'll go six just for fun. And I'm gonna throw some filters in here and look at just houses. And I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna pick some things we know about. So I'm gonna put, uh, you know, must have a garage. So we're gonna pick a garage, square footage, let's go minimum 1100 max. Let's just go maybe 1900, right? So I just wanna get a range, get rid of some stuff that's outliers and it gives me 31 homes in this area. Again, I'm right in here, so these are good comps right here. That looks newer. Let's put a filter for new, because I'm seeing a lot of new stuff. So let's go down here and put um, year built. Okay, so I'm gonna put maximum year built 2000. That way we're not looking at stuff built after the year 2000. And then what I like to do is I like to go in here and put a filter for the price per square foot and look at the highest down to the lowest. So 283, this house got 283 bucks a foot. And look, it's a nice rehab, but it's not brick. Brick always gets higher. This one got 280, that looks, that looks brick, but it got 280 a foot. This one got 279 a foot, another rehab. So I'm seeing on red fin, some really nice looking stuff that's been rehabbed. That's hitting the two, a couple at 280, this one's at 270. Here's another one at 270 a foot. Again, these are that's not brick though, and it got 270 a foot. So I would feel really confident at 280 a foot. So at 280 a foot, and we're 1412, that puts me at 395. So if I go 395 and I go 75% of that, which is where a flipper wants to be, and I subtract out. Now these are big rehabs, so I'd probably subtract out, you know, 40. That puts me at what I say, 296 minus 40 puts me around back at that 256 number. Okay, so is 250, is 250 a good buy? I think I'm kind of right there. Um, I think what I'd like to do is go ahead and get an offer in at the 250 and uh, get some due diligence and then spend some more time on this. Maybe during my due diligence, diligence period, what I'll do is I'll often, I'll often test the market with it meaning I'll put it out there, I'll see what people think, see if I get some bites. But I'm feeling like this might be a great flip for somebody or I think I could probably just take this down for 250 and just resell it for 300, 310, something like that without even doing anything to it and make a quick 20, 30, just whole tailing it. So that's another strategy. So I'm gonna call back Erica and tell her, write the offer for 350, let's see if we can get it done. Yeah, hi, Erica. Hey. Hey, I think we're close. I think we're close. Do you think we could okay. get it? Do you think we could get it a little lower? Um, if I can work out the speed. Yeah. Yeah, 
there'd be no fee on my side. You know, maybe maybe I pay the closing fees. I don't know. I'd really love to be down like more like two forty on an offer. Two forty, and you pay the I'll pay uh, I'll, I'll pay closing fees. You know, pending you know any back taxes or mortgage or anything like that. But you know the the regular closing fees. I could pay all that. Yeah. Yeah, really close though to the other one, so I don't know if they would. Yeah, I mean, I maybe I can come up a little bit. I just, feel, I'd feel really good at two forty as a buy, not two fifty. What, what if we try two forty five? I can ask for two forty five. Now, are you gonna pay? You're saying paying their attorney fee? Is that what you're saying? Or yeah, is is because this is an attorney state. That's right. It's an attorney state. Um. Yeah, yeah, the closing fees. Oh, okay. So title um, and the attorney and all that. Okay, let me check. Let me see about the two forty five. That's close. That, I mean, it's just kind of close to the other one. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe maybe offer that. Put push it real hard and then see what they say. Yeah, I mean, if the numbers make sense, they're fine. That's what they're looking for the most money. So let me see what I can do. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I'll get back with you shortly. Okay. I'll I'll wait All for right. your call. Thank you. Yep. Okay, Thank bye. You. Okay. Okay, so maybe she'll call back and we'll get that. I'm just trying to get a little bit more. I mean, I think I would probably try to make 250 work, but I don't I don't want to just go in there at 250. I want to try to get a little bit better of a deal. Um, so maybe 245, save me five grand on this deal. You know, I do have to pay the closing fees. So guys, I think this might be a deal. I'm really excited about this one. And I hope more than anything, whether it becomes a deal or not, isn't the point of this episode of this show that I do. What, what's really the point is showing you what's possible, showing you that you can go into a market, you can find leads, you can call, you can make offers and just being active, just getting on the phone, just talking to sellers, talking to agents turns into deals. I had no idea we'd be talking about this other property. I called on one that's pending. She brings up another one. I love that it's off market. It's a pocket. We call that a pocket listing where we're going to try to work it out without it going on market. That way, when I bring it on market at some point, it's a brand new property to everybody. So I'm really excited about this one. I think I can make those numbers work. Um, again, do I know for sure? No, because what I'll do is I'll get a contract. I'll get some due diligence. I'll dig in deeper. I don't want to dig in deeper until I actually have a contract. One of my policies that you'll learn if you if you watch my content and learn from me is I want to do the least amount of effort possible to get to a contract. After I get a contract and I'm locked in, I give myself some contingency and then I want to do my deep dive analysis. I want to really pour into the numbers, really understand the rehab, really understand the buyer market, even test the market, put out put it out there to some buyers, talk to people I know, really then find out, do I really actually have a good deal at 245 or 250? Um, and and, and do, the, do that work at that point after I have a contract. So again, contract first, due diligence second is, is how I like to operate in a random market where I just don't know enough about what's going on. Uh, guys, so again, check that out. You can use PropWire totally free, unlimited searches, unlimited downloads. Leave a comment, let me know the value you got from watching this, if what you learned. And, uh, and I'll see you on the next video.